when you're working on a bike that has, whoa, wait, internal routing. Oh, how do you respond to this? Figure this all out without spending hours lacing up or restringing. Tips and tricks after this. Welcome to I Know A Guy Bicycles. Welcome to I Know A Guy Bicycles. Hanging out with the guy. Hi, I'm Justin the guy. Obviously, I have a garage shop. I'm taking scary how to use bikes one bike at a time. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe. Welcome back to Hanging Out with the Guy. Hi, I'm Justin the guy. I know a guy bicycles at uh, this old bike series. Here's some tips and tricks video about how to address those internal routing cables. Yes, they can be a burger. Um, it doesn't have to be a Trek or it could be a Specialized, it could be a, a Cannondale and other brand. As long as you identify that cable routing is internal first, then you can actually make the appropriate uh, decisions and the best practices to make sure you do not make those mistakes of dropping those cables in there, then you're spending hours with a matter trying to thread them back through. So after looking at this, I'm like, oh, I better probably make some insights on this. I do have a video. I've done this with the cable routing for a Klein, which is older, but I wanted to do something a little bit newer, a newer model to kind of same techniques, just on a newer bike. So without further ado, let's dive into this. So what you want to do is get like cable sleeves. These cable sleeves are back in the days. I used to put these on the, um, the top tube cables. So they wouldn't rub off the paint, but even though they got dirt on them, it still scratched up the paint, but that's what these are originally. Uh, they're basically a sleeve that fits within the actual um, slot of the cable stops but they're skinny enough to do that and be able to thread them through to um, to make sure you get that cable rerouted. Um, I believe you can probably find these at the hardware store, so just take your, you know, like your uh, regular brake cable or housing, I mean, something that's not off the bike, like something that's left over, or possibly go to your bike shop and maybe they'll have some of these for sale. Uh, but you can take that cable to the hardware store and try to get a plastic sleeve that fits like so. I'll try to find some on Amazon. I'll put a link below if I do find anything. So basically, I have three different, uh, three, three ones of the same diameter, um, a, a couple different lengths. And this one is kind of a little tricky because I have a sleeve that goes through here, then it has a bottom cap, and then it has a sleeve two that go up to the um, front derailleur cables up front here. And then I have a brake one. So this is all internal uh, cable routing. So you may come across this, this on some of the newer bikes where a lot of the cables go internal routing. And then, and Perk Tool does make a toolkit to help with those. I have not played with them yet. Uh, at some point, I will be able to afford to buy one of those. I don't usually go through this too much. And I also have the sleeves already. So the best practice I've done and you know, I, I've been okay with it, but at some point I want to check out the park tool that actually does the cable routing. But here we're going to dive into this. So I like to work back to forward, so let's get in position. Okay, on this one here, they have a stop here that actually insert that pulls out. By grabbing that stop, I use one of these hook tools from um, Park Tools. That is, is a little housing stop that has a slot in there. And I don't want to lose this guy because it'll be really hard to find. And what I do is take your piece of housing sleeve or cable sleeve and you start threading it through. So I can feel it go through pretty smoothly, and then I'll have to remove this plate to access those. So this one uses an Allen key, and hopefully your bike has this particular uh, open portion that you can actually pop this out. careful not to pull any cables through. It's kind of enough to open it up. So, so 
can work those cables out of that sleeve. Then I can proceed to push my housing through. So this one's not too bad because I can put the cable through here and run the magnet and pull through this bigger gap on this end. But sometimes it's small and small, so you definitely want to have that sleeve in there. And once I have that sleeve in the place, now I need to pull that cable out so I can hook this up like a loop and I can work that cable out. So this is just kind of dangling there. So to prevent that from sliding out, I'll let you take a little piece of painter's tape. Either you can tape it on this end here, um, and you can just do like a big gap so it doesn't slide through. And then I might do another one down here once I get the other one through. And this one, since it's straight up, I don't have to worry about it too much because I can see and thread it through this direction once I get that gap in there. But this one's already prepared. So onto the other two down tubes. So if you only have like one or two of these, then just do one cable at a time and swap it out. Um, for my example, I'm going to be doing the, the shifters cables on both sides. Then after that, then I'll do the brake. Um, turns out I need four and only have three sleeves. So you want to guide that up underneath. And you pop it out up here. And you hold that. So you can still, I can still feel the sleeve moving upwards over the housing. Then at some point, gonna pop out. Hopefully by using this and guide it to go through that port without having to take these guys out. I feel it bumping up against it. No. Nope. And if you have extra excess you can just hold the cable itself like an anchor and kind of wiggle that sleeve through. For some reason it doesn't want to. So I'm going to pull this back out. See what's going on. So it looks like it's bumping up against this. So my trick is is to cut it at an angle like so. So you see I have a little spiky piece. And that may help draw that, we're able to guide that through this top guide. So I can feel it sliding through. And this is probably not too terrible if it does drop because you have a bigger gap underneath and you can use a magnet to draw it through. But um, sometimes you can get those cables, unfortunately, will uh, cross. too big. It just bends up. So we'll try that again. So here's a trick though, if you have a hard time getting the thread through on this end, what you could do is just kind of reverse it. So this is by I'll be cutting this cable here, but you don't want to let go of it because you still want that cable to thread through. So I'm going to try to work it from the other direction, like so. This is dangerous territory, so let's be careful here. 
I'm about to drop this through and I'm going to hold the cable underneath so it doesn't slide and fall right out. I'm trying to get it to go through that housing sleeve. So I finally got it to pull through from the top. So my sleeve's in there. So there's that wreck of a cable. Seems like they all have a different little stop gap. Yeah. Okay, once you get the cable in there, out of the, through the shifter, then you want to go through and have your housing go through the new, new piece here. And, and this has two positions, you know, outside or inside, and I prefer to do the inside, so I'm gonna put it here. And that housing is going to roll with the handlebars this direction and go down like so. So once I tape it up, it's going to hold its position here and go into this slot here. So I will then proceed to put my housing the cable through the sleeve that I put in in position here. So, so it pops out the bottom. 
And once I have it popping out on the bottom, then I can proceed to pull the sleeve out and voila! That's the one. Then we go to do the back. So I go underneath. And this one pokes out the top end. And voila. And that cable is now threaded through, so I don't have to worry about it dropping inside. Like so. And hold that in position. So onto Okay, gonna go do the, the front now, and I'm gonna hopefully be able to guide it through, since I have a shorter end to start with. Oh, oh look at that. So on this end, they actually, this plug, slides the housing stop comes out so I can actually guide this easier through maybe <laughs> there we go so the housing here so that's fine I don't have to have it through here I just need to pull this out and again do not lose this guy it will be a booger Tape this up. It doesn't go anywhere. And now I can proceed to the lining of the front shifter. So I like to take the tape off so I can just, I'm going to replace it anyway so I can actually see this housing. And then I cut the support tape that holds the housing in place. So the front brake, leave in there. And this has a little adjustment, adjuster for the front derailleur. So you want to keep that all in order, set that aside. You got to make sure the shifter is all in the low position. Get the cable out. And these go out underneath the bottom. It'll make it very easy to replace. So. But put it in there as soon as you take it out so you know where you need to go. Which spot to shoot for? So on these the little plate pops out and you can guide the cable through and there's also a sleeve internally. So you can get that guy to fit through there. And if you need to kink it here, that's fine because this is actually gonna be cut off anyway. So you wanna pull the cable through. So it fits engaged and oh. So you want to follow the hole that you pulled it out immediately and guide it through the actual ratchet here. So you get it to go through. And I 
and you want to lightly test it, make sure it's fitted in place. And once that's in place, you can put the cover back on. It just snaps in the place and holds there. Then you proceed to put your cable back on. So we have the longer piece first. So I'm gonna put that on there. And again on the other side, I want to go on the inside. And we have our barrel adjuster, which is this little guy. Jaguar, which are kind of cool little guys. So you can adjust your cable while you're on the fly. So if it's off just a little bit, you can readjust it and get it all back into place. And you put on your short piece. Once you have all your housing back in a spot, then you can thread it through the sleeve that you have in there. But remember, before we have that block, housing stop, which is this guy here. So you wanna put that on first. So it's all ready to go. So always lay it out in order. So when you go back to put it together, you're not forgetting a piece and try to keep your work area clean. All right, let's pop down the bottom. Now I can remove my tape. I'm gonna block back in. Get my housing all lined up and pull my sleeve. Like voila, like so. So I got both of the cables to go through for the front and rear derailleur. Now we got a little issue. I had a oops-a-daisy. So my cable dropped when I was fighting with the derailleur cable and now I gotta line this through the actual top tube now. So, but this actually has a screw to take out the tab, and I'm gonna show you how to thread that through um, by going through the front end and using a magnet to draw it over to the other end. So let's just dive into this. So my housing on the other one seemed to be short. That's where it kind of um, did a little booger deal like this guy. So I made it a little bit longer, and I cut it so it's, flush so it's not the swirl it sticks up in no burr so I want to get a clean cut so I got a clean cut there and I do both sides like so and the trick is for me I take a file and I file that flush so I get all that like material, extra material and contaminants out of the way. So it's a clean area where the cable slides in and out so it has no binding. So I got, we used to use a uh, grinder uh, to grind the ends of our housing for breaks to make them flush. But since I don't have a grinder, I just use a good flat file get that material clean, like so. And then I take a poker and pull out any excess material that pops up. And then I take a sharp blade and I cut that excess out so it's flush. So I don't want any extra material there to get sucked into the into that um, housing, causing bindage of the brake. So this gives you the smoothest flow of the cable going through, like so. So I prepped my housing. Now I get a brake cable. The brake cable I have in there is obviously too short now. 
And these particular ones, you got to uh, take this little screw out to get access to it. So you don't want to lose this little screw. It's this little cap. So you can open it up. So that housing pin can fit in. Oh, come on. Sometimes you get bound up. Okay, there we go. So there goes the old housing. And then I just thread through. My new housing. So it fits in flush there. And I take my cap, put it back in place, it'll snap in. And I take that little screw that I hopefully I don't drop on the floor or put it over somewhere where it's easy to uh, access to. This is why I have a clean floor so if I drop anything like this I can find it. That screws right back in there. So the brake cable is in place. I take my new housing. I like to put a little bit of grease in these guys to add a little bit of flow. So I use uh, Triflo's Superior Lube, and that slides in this guy here. Oop. And you don't need to put ends on these because it's designed to, the shifter's designed to have the end. And this piece here is the same, actually. Let's check it. What I'm checking is a, kind of like a, Cable ferrule. Let's see if it needed one in there. Maybe it was missing, and that's what caused it to be a problem. So you can take a, a ferrule. I just drop. Oh, no, it doesn't fit in there. So obviously it's designed to hold the housing snug, so it is its own ferrule. And you want to be mindful of where you want to thread this because to unthread it is quite a burger. Uh, for me, I want this housing to be underneath, so it's underneath the shifter, like so. So when I tape it up, then it's the right spot. And I put it through here. Well, now I need to get a magnet to thread it through. So I'll double check where I want to tape this and to go through, make sure that's good. Okay, we're good there. Make sure I got a cable to work with. So let's show you how to use a magnet. So we're talking about this booger right here. All right, and this is a, a housing stop and it actually has a cable. Let's see which, okay. So it is a, what size is this? Small. <laughs> Probably a, uh, what do they call it, a, a two. It's probably a two Allen. Take the screw out, and again, you don't want to lose the screw because if it disappears on you, you'll never find it again. Um, like so. Sit that in a safe place. You can take a small, you can take a small screwdriver where I have this hook. To kind of hopefully, if it sticks, usually they just slide it out. So that's where you want to remove. That's where the hole we're going to be threading that housing through. So I find my strongest magnet. I feel it guide in there. Oh, I see it. Okay. Oh, lost it. There you were. Where'd you go?
Okay, so since I have this hook, or I can grab it with this other end that has a magnet, since I have that, go to the front and thread it up. Oh, voila! Boop. There we go. Got that magical piece taken care of. And then you slide this through like so. Fits right back into place. Pull the rest of your housing through. Cut up on the fork a little bit. There we go. And once that's in place, take that screw. Allen, and you thread that back in place. So now you're ready to cut your housing for the other piece. So now I have my cables routed, the new cables for front and rear derailleur and brake housing. So with all those little tips and tricks there, and don't forget the little back housing here when I do the derailleur, goes back in there so all my bits are in place and I'll put this back in place when I do some adjustment but once I get that all laid out I'm gonna proceed to clean the frame sometimes I'll leave the sleeves in there but there was too much going on so I just wanted to stream the cables first before I did detailing so it's it's nice and ready to go and put those parts that I just cleaned right back on the frame so hopefully you got some tips and tricks on this of getting those cables through I know it's kind of uh, challenging but take your time think about it do one cable at a time until next time from the garage thank you for spending the day with me